To shuffle or not to shuffle? That really is kind of the question. Um, now, this concept has really come into my life lately because I owned an iPod. Now, unfortunately, that iPod was stolen about a month ago and it breaks my heart because there was a lot of really great music on it and it was also attached to my very expensive noise-canceling headphones. So, I hope you're enjoying those headphones, whoever took those, uh, because I am no longer doing so. Uh, now, in the interim, because eventually I will be picking up uh, a new you know, pair of headphones as well as an iPod. In the interim, my roommate lent me her iPod Shuffle. Now, I give you this preface because on my iPod, it was, you know, the classical small iPod, but I never had individual songs. I only had albums, full-length albums, because when I listened to music, I never really shuffled my music. I would play a full album and then find another album that I wanted to listen to and listen to the full album. And that's kind of how I listen to music. Now, with the iPod Shuffle, I couldn't do that. So I was forced to put on some of my favorite tracks. And I mean, it only had two gigs on it. So I was very limited in terms of space. But over the past month, I've started to understand the appeal of shuffling music. I was always really opposed to shuffling music because each song lent itself to the greater story of the album. Whether or not the album had a concept behind it, I still felt like artists uh, really thought about the placement of their songs. No song was an island, so to speak. Each one was an affected by the one that preceded it. And so that's how I love to listen to music. And I know a lot of artists do not like albums being shuffled. I mean, uh, when Pink Floyd finally allowed their music to be downloaded from like iTunes, Roger Waters put a real stamp on it saying you had to download the entire album. You couldn't just download one song. Uh, Steven Wilson has gone on record destroying iPods in the past. Now, I'm pretty sure his, his um, thoughts about that has laxed slightly. Uh, but even such artists as like Robert Fripp, you can't download any of their albums on like iTunes or even stream them on st services such as Spotify. So there's this real like ideological battle between should we shuffle music or should we just let them play on albums? And I mean, certain musical genres are more shuffleable, if that's a word, than others. Like pop music, for instance, or uh, dance music, EDM. Those single-serving songs that you get with, um, say, bands like Coldplay, that they just, like, their biggest hit right now is just a single song. It's not an album. Um, those deal well with the shuffle. And there is an appeal, as I've said, to the shuffle that I've learned to appreciate. Uh, there is this concept of the unknown next song and how a song will be affected by the next. Uh, there's no real planning or forethought that you as a listener need to put in. It's very catered already. Like it's very low maintenance. You just plug in and go. And there's this anticipation of what the next song is. There's also that uh, skip feature that you have. So if a song comes in and you don't really want to listen to it, you can skip. The only problem is that's a slippery slope because once you start skipping the one song, you basically just keep skipping and skipping and skipping and skipping. But I have found myself where if I don't really want to put in that forethought of what to listen to next, yeah, I'll shuffle and I'll be surprised of what song comes in. And there's also this added benefit of listening to a song that I haven't heard in quite a while that I normally wouldn't hear with that forethought, with that planning. It's just that kind of unexpected surprise that I like. Now, unfortunately, it still does have that loss of the previous and next song. Like, there's that narrative that is lost within it. And um, it does create a island of songs as opposed to a, I guess, country or continent of it. Uh, so I guess the, the battle rages on, and it is becoming more complex with streaming services. Uh, with streaming services, you now have playlists that other people have catered, and the playlists are actually quite an interesting take on it, because now it's definitely no song is an island, because each song is kind of affected by the next. Uh, but that's a discussion for later. Uh, I'm going to hold off on that discussion for a little bit later. Uh, Within the final verdict, yes, I will be eventually picking up a new iPod, and yes, I will be listening to it album by album, but I'm not going to shy away from Shuffle All, where I have in the past. Um, I feel like, you know, there is a nice middle ground of the Shuffle All feature, but 
I hope people still listen to full-length albums, and with the audience that I know I have, that's definitely the case, because genres such as progressive rock and um, art rock and even indie rock, these types of music, you can't really shuffle. Like, could you imagine listening to The Wall on shuffle or Tommy on shuffle, like concept albums like that, or even albums that aren't quite concept albums but still need that next song to have it. Like if Trick of the Tail was shuffled, it wouldn't quite have that same narrative flow that you like within that album. So it is a balance and I guess it's those types of uh, songs that you know need the shuffle and that don't need the shuffle. So that's my own thoughts. What are your thoughts on it? Do you like shuffling your music? Do you listen to full length albums? Or do you do a little bit of combination of both, which was what I'm learning to do? Let me know of your own thoughts about this by commenting down below. So thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are definitely the best. And until next time, notes out.